everybody, and welcome to Psychology in Everyday Life, The Psych Files. Michael Britt here, and this is a video episode. This one had to be video because it has to do with people seeing things in various objects. And so, the only way to show you that is to do a video episode. This episode is entitled, Lemon Slices and a New Face on Mars. Gestalt Principles at Work. Maybe you have heard about the man who saw, or says he sees, a, an image of the Virgin Mary on a lemon slice. Now here is the image of the lemon slice, and you see uh, some kind of a face. It's true, you do see some sort of a face. People see various kinds of faces. Some people see Madonna, some people see Nicole Kidman, but uh, some people also see the Virgin Mary. Now, this is not new. You've probably heard of this sort of thing happening a lot. Another news story heard just yesterday morning. Perhaps you've heard about this Navy base in Coronado, California. And there are dormitories there, which people discovered using Google Earth form the shape of a swastika. And here you see that shape right here. These are L-shaped buildings, but we see them as a swastika. And I understand that uh, the government is going to spend some money to alter the terrain there to make that not look like a swastika. In fact, if you go looking for this, if you go to Coronado, uh, California, and Google Earth, you'll see that the image has already been uh, altered to eliminate this shape here. We seem to be programmed to see shapes. We are especially sensitive to seeing faces. Human beings see patterns. This is really what this is part of. We are really sort of wired to notice patterns, and that's where a lot of a lot of the talk about uh, correlations that don't really make sense. We we tend to see cause and effect. We 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 look around the world around us. We try to make sense of it. We need to in order to survive. So one of those survival tools is the one which allows us to see patterns around us to organize the chaos of the world. Now, getting back to these images, you may have seen this image. This is the face on Mars. This image comes from nasa.gov. And if you don't see the image here of the face, let me just zoom in until hopefully you see the face. So this has been there, and yes, indeed, it does look like a face. Now, what it means, does it mean that it was put there? by uh, as a signal or a sign of some kind? Well, of course, that's been debated ever since the image was discovered. What's important for us is that we actually do see the face. We see an image there. Now, interestingly, and somewhat recently, scientists discovered yet another face. They were probably happy to uh, find this image. Now, take a look at this. And again, we'll zoom in on this and, and rotate it a little bit. And that actually looks like what? Looks like a happy face. So I can imagine that the scientists found that to be a very interesting discovery. Why do we see these kinds of images? Now, you probably have seen the infamous image that's often associated with psychology. That would be the faces slash vase, right? And that's this image here. Now, this is called multi-stability, believe it or not, which means basically it's one of those figure ground images. Typically, when we look at an image, we see a figure, and then there's the background. And images like these, they're sort of unstable in that what you consider to be the figure and what you consider to be the ground can change based upon what you really focus on. Here's another image, an image of a cube. This you've no doubt seen. And once again, which way the cube is facing can change depending upon how you process it. This one's also quite famous. Maybe you've seen this one. This is the image that could be an old lady or it could be a young lady. This can really throw some people, you can, some people I think see the old lady a little bit easier than the uh, younger woman. But part of this shows us is really what um, Gestalt psychologists refer to as our active mind. The Gestalt psychologists demonstrate that our minds are actually very active and uh, we are processing what goes on around us. And so they came up with a number of principles which explain why we see what we see. So the most famous of these principles of Gestalt perception is closure. 
And I think closure explains a lot of what we've seen already. Even though an image is not complete, like the face on Mars, we can see it as complete. So here's a here's a kind of a textbook example of closure. These are some of these. I think this image is from Wikipedia. These this is a box in a circle, but of course they're not complete, and yet we see them as complete. One more closure example. Now, what is this? Probably you're looking at this and saying, well, that's just a bunch of blobs. Okay, so I'm going to move those blobs a little bit. Going to get them a little bit closer. And pretty soon you're going to start to see, hopefully, an image. All right, that's as close as I'll have them get. Do you see it? Now, in case you don't, I won't tell you what it is yet. In case you don't, I'm going to try it again. Here's those blobs. Notice that uh, some of them are going to change color as they get closer. That's it there. Now, hopefully, you see a horse and rider. This is also a somewhat familiar uh, image as well. So, what makes you see a horse and rider is closure. Okay, so that's one principle. The next principle of Gestalt perception is similarity. All right, and here you see a, a sort of, a, again, a textbook example of similarity. What you probably see here are rows of circles and triangles. Right? And that's because we have a tendency to put together things that are similar. And the third principle is called proximity. And here you've got some circles. And again, we are grouping these things because we see a couple of different groups of circles. Uh, let me show you a very interesting piece of artwork. And uh, it's very unique because it has to be captured on video. And you'll see why as we going to zoom in here. This is an artist whose name is Oscar Munoz. What he's doing here is he's drawing on hot stone using a paintbrush and water. And he's drawing a face here and as he draws the parts that he's already drawn evaporate. An interesting example of how our tendency for closure helps us to appreciate artwork. Now, let's switch gears a little bit and see how these Gestalt principles are actually not only in an art gallery, but actually right here on the web. Here's an example of poor use of the Gestalt principles. This is a website, and this was one of the ones that were voted as, you know, a worst website of, I think, 2006. And as you see, uh, you don't know really know where to click. There's no organization to what you see here. And that's what it's all about, right? We... we hear the term gestalt, we think, oh, it's, you know, that's the, uh, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts thing, right? But it's all really about organization. And you can see that this site is just poorly organized, really almost not organized. And let me show you another site. This happens to be, I have to admit, a project that I'm working on. And here is a site, and it's called My Reading Lab. And uh, so a little plug for it there. But you can see there are four panels on here. It's a very streamlined website. Different functions are in different panels. So we're using good principles of Gestalt organization. We are grouping similar functions together. So every day you go on the web and you look at websites and some of them are poorly or well organized. Some of them using or not using well the uh, Gestalt principles. Now there's an interesting kind of way that we can manipulate you into seeing or not seeing something in these various images. Let me return to the image of the horse. Now, I can actually get you or let, let you be more likely to see the horse if I set you up properly. And that's called getting you into a perceptual set. Now, what if I show you these images? Okay. Now, these images really have nothing to do with animals. So if I show you first these images and then show you this image of the man on the horse, you might not be likely to see what that is. But what if instead I showed you these images? Now, these are all images of animals. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of activating in your brain a, a, a schema, all the things associated with animals, so that when we get to this, the incompleted horse and rider, you are more likely, I'm going to predict here, to see this as a horse and rider. Now, I've placed these images on the web as a kind of an experiment, which you can run on yourself or on your friends. So um, do check out the website. I'll have a link to that, and you can run a little experiment to see if this works. Here's another 
use of these Gestalt principles. Or really, it's a use of our tendency to uh, better understand things when they are organized. And that would be concept maps. Now, actually, you know, you've probably seen concept maps in terms of uh, organizational charts that have been around for a long time. But here's a concept map from my site, and this organizes the various sorts of rewards and punishments. If you really want to understand something, if something seems very complicated and unrelated, try putting things into a map. Check into that. I think you'll really find it to be very helpful. I encourage you to you know, subscribe to the Psych File, subscribe to other podcasts. Really a fun way to learn and to uh, you know, get in touch with uh, hobbies and interests. So all you do is really click on subscribe and then all of the new episodes will come to your iTunes podcast area whenever there's a new episode. Okay, well, there you go, everyone. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Psych Files. Hope you enjoyed the video episode. We'll be back to our audio format next time. Michael Britt here saying uh, thanks for watching and listening and have a good week.